Look at that, look at that. Made it legal that your bow fisherman could take catfish. Mississippi outdoors. Today is opening day at Youth's uh, at Kapire WMA, and I have Braden Palmer and my son Gunner Palmer. And uh, kind of drizzly, rainy this morning. Humidity's pretty high, but we're going to give it a try. Kapire County WMA, it's in western Kapire County near the Claiborne County line. It's a little over 6,500 acres. It's been, uh, it's one of the oldest state-owned WMAs that, that the Mississippi Department of Wildlife, Fish, and Parks has. It was purchased in 1949. Uh, it's primarily forested, uh, hardwoods and pine. Well, we had a gobbler come in quiet this morning. We were set up on, sound like, what do y'all think, three or four different gobblers, gobbling in a group. Heard some hens in the distance coming. The gobblers would come and go, come and go. One time they had kind of broke, and I thought they was coming. Mm -hmm. And um, heard the hens, they just cut them off. Gobbler shut up, so we knew the hens had got with them. Yeah. Then all of a sudden, a, a gobbler had come in silent. They'd come out, this come out on the edge of this road down here, 45, 50 yards. Gunner, I mean, Braden was able to turn around and get on him, but just borderline shot, and it ain't worth taking a chance of crippling one. And, uh, hey, I believe he could have done it, but it's just, I don't like crippling one. I'd rather let him go. So uh, we're going to go to another spot. Okay. Folks have heard some birds this morning there, and uh, they let us know about them, so we're going to go try to get on them. This year, the 2013 spring turkey season, we're seeing a much more normal spring pattern than what we did last year in 2012. Last year in 2012, we had an exceptionally early spring. You know, the entire country had a very warm winter. This year in 2013, we're in more of a typical spring pattern. The early part of our season, you're still dealing with some of the winter flocks. Gobblers are still flocked up. Uh, and as we go into the season, those flocks are beginning to disperse. And, and so, we're, you know, the best is still ahead of us. When you look across Mississippi, over the last several years, you know, some regions have fared better than others. The, the Delta region, for instance, along the Mississippi River has not done so well because of flooding in three of the last four years. And so turkey populations are down because hens were flooded during the nesting season. Um, other parts of the state uh, tend to, to kind of rise and fall based on how good the hatch was in that particular region in a given year. And that's going to vary from year to year. We do see variance across the state. Um, now, last year in 2012, we saw good, a good hatch in all regions. So all regions were up. We're here at Kapai WMA in Kapai County. Uh, I have Braden Palmer, my nephew, and have Gunner Palmer, my son. Uh, pretty cool morning this morning. We've heard some turkeys gobble over on the uh, western part of the county. Uh, and we're going to try to get over there and see if we can get on them this morning.
get your bird. Hold it right. Big birds. You can't even hardly tote him. Get it. The two year old bird? Yeah, two year old. That's all right, boy. He's probably about a nine inch beard. And he's definitely a two year old. I've seen numerous turkeys on, on the management area through the year, and all the deer hunters was actually complaining about them messing them up, which is a good thing. <laughs> but, and we've done a lot of burning on here, and it's helped, and I mean, it, it's, it's just been good last couple of years for hatching. I figured the turkey's gonna swing down this open ridge, and, and just like turkeys do, they gonna come where, where you don't want them to, but it actually worked out. But he swung around and come through this thicket, him and the other guy that was telling behind. This was, this was a strutter, he was doing the strutting. And Gunner was able to get around and get up on him and, and, and had a hole to shoot through. And when he got here, he, he shot him. He made a good <laughs> shot. I'm proud of you. Good shot. The kids have the first shot at turkeys, first part of the turkey season. Normally, on most of these areas, uh, youth get the first week of the hunting season. Uh, and that, that way, uh, the, the game of not being harassed much or having been chased. You know, they're kind of naive for that hunting season, so the youth get their, their first shot at it. Uh, eight and a quarter. Offering youth opportunity is a must if we're going to get kids involved in the outdoors. If we, if our agency does not, if we're not a leader in getting kids in the outdoors, we're going to lose. Both as, you know, in my opinion, as, as a family unit, uh, as, as outdoorsmen, outdoors people. Uh, if we're going to carry this tradition on and um, you know, promote conservation, we have to give youth opportunities to get out there and enjoy the resources. Uh, Natchez State Park is a really good uh, example. We have youth uh, turkey hunting opportunities there. Also this year we opened up youth squirrel hunting for the first time ever on the park. And now we're looking at other parks that we, where we can apply this model for both deer, turkey, and squirrel hunting to provide new hunting opportunities throughout the state. For over 70 years, Mississippi Outdoors Magazine has served the readers of the Magnolia State. In it contains several interesting features such as wildlife photography, salooner tables, and even a kid's page. Subscriptions to the magazine are very inexpensive, and when you subscribe, you will receive six bi-monthly issues containing articles on hunting and fishing in the state, public lakes, state parks, and even our wildlife management areas. For more information, call our toll-free number at 1-888-874-5785. the size of that brim. Oh, that's what we came at. Yes, sir. Beautiful bass. Hey, Randy, that's what they look like. Ooh, I just thought I was going to have you more there. I felt him bump it. We're here today at Longley Plantation in Purvis, Mississippi. Uh, we've been invited out here to do some bass fishing on our lake. They've got great quail hunting, but what's the least known is the bass fishing. After a great day of morning of quail hunting, come out here and catch some beautiful bass. There's supposed to be some really big bass in here, so we're gonna find out today. It's just no competition, unless I take the fish over there and put it on his hook for him. So I think it's gonna be a good day. Nice overcast. Let me see if I can pull this big one up for you here real quick. I, I just, the main thing I don't wanna do is I don't want Todd to get his feelings hurt because me and Thomas Hofer, we, we're gonna catch a lot of fish. And Todd, you know how upset he gets about that. So. I'm ready. We go ahead and get, get this handy because we're probably going to need it for the more big pigs. I 
I got my fishing partner with me. I got Thomas Holford. Thomas is actually Reese's son that manages uh, Longleaf, and he's got a fish on. Bring him in, son. <laughs> I got to fish with Thomas about three years ago out here, and he whooped me then, and I, I can see now he's gonna whoop me today. Reese, tell us a little bit about what you have here. We're gonna try to come out here and uh, catch some good quality bass. This is uh, an amenity that we offer to our guests uh, that, are, that are here hunting with us, and if they wanna take a break from hunting, we offer them a, uh, a good trophy lake to come bass fishing in to catch some, catch some good quality largemouth. Well, hopefully we can catch a, catch a few fish, have a good day. We got a box full of baits, we'll catch some. Uh, we, we're gonna try. Like I threw, threw it in his mouth right there, he was waiting for it. Yeah, he's pretty that's, bad, that's pretty bad. Probably two pounds, I guess, something like that. Not a bad fish. Nice healthy fish. Yeah, not a bad fish. You can see they, they got plenty to eat. <laughs> That's, a, That's good a good one. one. Get him in here. Oh, he's whooping me, whooping me. I believe it. It's getting bad. Good. Good. Very good bass. Look at that, look at that. You done, boy? All right. You got him, son. <laughs> right. yeah. Oh, yeah. You taking drag? Oh, yeah. That's, Ooh, a, that's good a good fish. fish. That's a good fish. Here, let me get the net. Now, that's what we came at. Yes, sir. Good job. Not a boy. Pretty fish. Three pounds, easy. Beautiful bass. A little better fish there. He's on that rattle trap. I may have to rattle myself up a trap. <laughs> Got him. There he is. God, it seems like once Randy left in that pink shirt, everything kind of picked up. I tell you, that pink shirt was had a had a lot jaw. Man. Oh, he, he just figured out he was hooked. That looked like a pretty good fish, there. He's hung around a stump or something down there, but need me get it? Yeah. Oh! Oh, yeah. that's a good fish right there. Get that net. Get him out of here. That's a good fish right there. <laughs> Look at him spitting out them brim. <clears throat> he got little old brim coming all out of it. That's a good fish. It'll pass. This sucker's knotted up. The other fishermen have taken a run for the bank. They had a little drizzle came in here. It's just guided clouds and a little bit of rain and everything. And I guess that pink shirt made him run to the truck. Ah, <laughs> uh, fish are already wet. They don't know it's raining. Oh yeah, pretty bad. Hey, I caught a dadgum copper nose bluegill off that wall. Scooter got it, and I'm talking about yeah, his biggest two inch. But he hit a four inch rattle trap. That don't. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I just gone. did copper. That is silver and blue rattle trout. They love it. And that's what he's been catching on too. But they got three fin shad out there. But it ain't nothing like that last show we did. I just caught about a, I guess a four pound, maybe a little bigger bass out there. And when I got him up the boat, he just spit out brim. Yeah, he had about three yeah. brim in him. Yeah. Big, so that's what they was feeding on. Most time, you know, they'll spit out shad. Yeah. Lay some big brim in here. I mean some big. That copper nose, man. I mean, he was is on your that. motor on? <laughs> you you got to hurt your ball? <laughs> That's one of why we're sitting here spinning circles. I'm getting, I'm getting dizzy going around and around in circles. Good fish there. Oh, that's a decent pig right there. Now, uh, fellas, fellas, this, this, this is what we're after, uh, by the way.
Go ahead, Nady. Yeah. What you got there, yeah. Randy? Oh, we got a little perch, man. <laughs> well, you know how it is. Look at that. Todd? Todd. Not bad, not bad. Good one. Thomas, you put him on that one? <laughs> I seen I seen your hand and rod to him. I did. Kissing. Did the crossover. I ain't kissing that sucker. <laughs> Reese, Thomas, another great day fishing at Longleaf Plantation. Hey, second time. He beat me three years ago yeah. and he beat me again today. He outfishes me all the time, man. He don't feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> we are coming back because I am gonna win. I don't blame you. I don't blame you. Hey, it's an honor to have you guys back out here with us again. It's always an honor to have Mississippi outdoors at Longleaf. Uh, we just uh, love having you guys out here, and you know, great day fishing. Can't ask for much more. Good Lord bless us immensely. Same here. Yeah. Grace, it's an honor to be around your Thank son. You. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. Todd, I'm sorry. I know I caught more fish than you today. But I did get the Lunker Award, I believe. Okay, you did. <laughs> <laughs> did you know that money spent on a Mississippi hunting and fishing license is just like an investment? The Mississippi Department of Wildlife, Fisheries, and Parks uses money from license sales to enhance hunting and fishing, like providing public hunting opportunities on wildlife management areas, advising private landowners on deer and habitat management, providing public fishing opportunities on state lakes, and operating fish hatcheries for stocking public lakes and streams. So make an investment in the great outdoors. Buy your Mississippi hunting and fishing license today. Hey folks, Mississippi Outdoors usually films in the daytime, but hey, we brave in the mosquitoes and whatever else for us a little bit of nighttime bow fishing with guest of Joe Williams. Joe, Arrow in Addiction. That's the name of your company. Yes, sir. Tell me about it. Well, take people out and shoot fish. With bows show, in there. Show, show them the ropes, show them how we do it, where to do it, All right, hold what and you got. Uh, shoot some big fish. It's fun. It's a blast. We've been with you before. Now, we're, tonight we're at Tunica Lake. Yes, sir. And uh, why did you choose here for us to come? Because this is where I've been having the best luck. This is where the best fishing's been. The river's on a slow fall. We've got some clear water and lots of fish. And we, oh, we, we mainly targeting catfish tonight. Targeting catfish tonight. We're planning on having a fish fry. Catfish. Joe, real quick, uh, introduce us to who we, we're with tonight. We've got Trey Kelly from Hernando, Mississippi. We got Catfish Paul, Andy Wright. Uh, he's from all across the country, I believe. I fished with, or bow fished with catfish before. He don't miss much. I guess this is one sport, though, that uh, one recreational activity that practice makes perfect. Because it's, I mean, it, you, you got to do it a lot to get good at it. Well, it, it, I think practice increases your odds. I don't, I don't, I don't think there is no perfect to it. A lot of people don't understand. Like tonight, we're, we're targeting catfish. And a few years ago, Mississippi uh, made it legal that your bow fishermen could take catfish. Uh, has that improved, or, or, or what has that done for this? It, uh, they, got, they got it passed to where catfish were added as, uh, as one of the fish that we could shoot. And uh, that, that's been a plus because, I mean, it's always been known that, you know, bow fishermen were only able to target, you know, trash fish. Well, when we got catfish added to the list of species, then, you know, we actually had something that made, you know, pretty good table fare. And so, you know, it was kind of just, you know, a little little extra, you know, you go out there and, and you don't see very many of them as, as you're seeing <laughs> tonight. But when you do, you know, you got something that you can take home and, and cook and, and have for dinner. A lot of these fish, like the gar and the carp, they are a, a, a predation or predator type fish. And it, it does nothing but good to take take a lot of them out of uh, the lakes because of them eating other fish. I mean, the, some of the fish that 
that you don't eat, I mean, what other things do you do with them? There is a use for them. There is a use. I, I always try to find somebody that wants them. Most of the time, somebody will take them. Uh, the gar and the common carp are a little bit harder to give away. Uh, we'll take them back to the farm and, uh, and you know, we'll, we'll you just said farm. I, I had a guy tell me the other day, he said, I'll take all the fish I can get to put in my garden. Yeah, for fertilizer. Fish makes great fertilizer. And also uh, people that farm uh, turtles, turtle farmers, and crawfish farmers, they'll take all the, all the fish that you'll give them. Go fish. Okay. Do it, son. Catch fish. Oh, don't let him go. Joe, 10 years ago or so, you, you didn't hardly see but just a handful of people bow fishing. Now, I mean, people all over are doing it all over Mississippi. What, what's your idea on that? It, it's a fast growing sport. More and more people are getting into it. I think people are realizing that it's a sport that, I mean, your grandparents can do, your kids can do. You know, instead of being like deer hunting where you got, you know, a heavy, heavy draw weight bow, you know, you're pulling back bows that are anywhere from 20 to, you know, 50 pounds. So, I mean, yeah, it's okay for a young kid to do it. Oh, it, it's great for the youth. We go to, you go to these archery shops and stuff, and you see all those folks and they're excited shooting these targets. Hey, they don't want to shoot a target. They want to get out here and shoot something, don't they? Yes, sir. And, you know, people are all disappointed when, you know, deer season's over with. They think it's going to be, a, you know, a whole nother year before they get to, you know, shoot their bows. You know, they don't realize you got bow fishing. You can do all summer long. Actually, you can do it year round. Well, you can definitely. I, I, can, I got all the bows and equipment you need. I can show you how to do it. And then after that, you don't need me anymore. You can come out here and do it yourself. Average person get started. I mean, you don't see the average person buy a boat with all the lights on and all the fancy bells and whistles on the boat. I mean, what's your easiest answer to that? Uh, best thing that somebody can do wanting to start out is go out with a local guide, somebody that's going to have all the equipment that you'll need, somebody with a boat that's already rigged up. Uh, most of the time, they'll be happy to show you, you know, how they had the boat rigged, oh, why they yeah. have things like they do, Silver show you the type of bows they use and uh, tell you where you can get them at. Oh, the mate. plus side about going out with a guide is that you can get a feel for it before These you go out and just and, uh, you know spend a bunch of money on something that you've never even done before. Well, that's a big fish. Oh, get good fish on. <laughs> Back up. Saying, Randy, they can say what they want, but I'm gonna eat some catfish tonight. I got me one. <laughs> we'll share some of ours with you. Shake them off. Backlash boat fishing. They say you can only backlash bass fishing. Yeah. Well, I got news for you. Mississippi Outdoors can backlash while they boat fishing. That lets people know we're really fishing.
in the land. 